Hello once again my YouTubers of the MCMA Show. This is Malcolm coming at you live with a totally different type of video. A totally more in-depth video. A rant, so to speak. And a rant review on WWE Battleground to many others that are calling it the worst pay-per-view of 2017. And I have to agree with them because this show sucked so much. Like I said on Sunday, the pay-per-view was not really good in my description. I said it. It's not very good. And I will rate every single match on its own. And what was the problem for all of them, for, for some of the matches? Mostly, hmm, seven of them. Mostly, not even seven. Mostly, hmm, five of them. And most of the five were actually just weird, weird decision making. So, with that being said, let's get through this god awful mess, furball of a mess of a pay per view. And we'll just go from there. So, I bring to you the piece of crap which is called Battleground 2017. Alright, let's start off with the pre show match. By the way, my predictions, I only got three right on my prediction. Actually, not even three. I only got two right on my predictions. Two. Two right on my predictions. So, let's get this with the pre-show. Aiden English versus Ty Dillinger. Is it safe to say that Ty Dillinger is buried at this point? That WWE, like I said in the in the... The pick video, if you don't know what to do with him, why not put him in big rivalries? No, you put him in with Adam and with Adam English, Aiden English, and Aiden English wins? I mean, the match wasn't bad, but here's the problem that I had with the match. Number one, the match was, was good, but the problem with it is, is not having Aiden, Aiden, you're trying to make Aiden find an identity. That's fine. But him calling himself the Shakespeare of song, really, 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 just, just really, and also having Ty Dillinger lose really hurts him. It does. It really hurts Ty Dillinger. What else can you do, WWE? What are you going to do about this? What, like, how are we supposed to, to get pass through a character with a great gimmick like this and how are we going to put him over oh yeah we're going to make him lose to Jinder Mahal a jobber and a jobber of a world heavy of a world WWE champion uh we're going to make him lose to a guy who calls himself the Shakespeare of song we're not going to do anything we're just going to complete bury him and let the fans make him this lovable loser it doesn't work like that and because of that Kane City for you WWE Kane City for that match but overall, the match is getting C. That's all I can give it. It's just a C. Now, let's talk about the Usos versus the New Day. I got this one wrong. And to be honest, out of all the matches I would recommend, this is the match that was match of the night and the best match on the card. The Usos and the New Day really tore down the house for a great opening match. You had the fans screaming, this is awesome. This is awesome. For for the whole time, I literally thought that the Usos, for a minute, for the Usos, literally were going to retain those belts. When the when Jay Uso super kick Woods out in the air, that should have ended the the match. That should have been the finish right there, or. The other finish where, you know, the Usos, they do the, uh, the the super kick and then the splash. That should have been the finish. But no, I mean, I mean, the finish, either way, to me, I believe the Usos, to me, should have retained the belts by the disqualification or the finishes that I just talked about. That should have been the finish. But overall, um, match was great. The Usos um, did a really nice powerbomb on Kofi Kingston onto the floor. And, you know, this match was really good. Really excellent way to kick off the show. The best match on the card. And also, just a great 
title match in general. But I just hope the Usos title reign is not long. Please, God, don't make it long. Not the Usos, the New Day. I hope the New Day's title reign is not long. Please don't make it long. Please. Please, please. Overall, that it's that, that match is getting an A minus, and it's also getting a 9 out of 10. Really great match. This is the only match I would recommend out of the whole entire pay-per-view. Actually, actually, one of them. One of the best matches on the card. Actually, bar none the best. Also, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Baron Corbin. At first, the match seemed cool. It was actually really good. It was just, here's where decision-making kind of hurts WWE. Why? Look. Baron Corbin is the money in the bank. One money in the bank, right? He could afford a loss. And yes, he did lose the match. And yes, I did get this one right. But... Did we really need a DQ finish? We did not need a DQ finish for this. Why have um, Baron Corbin lose by DQ? He can afford a knee to the face. It wouldn't hurt him. It wouldn't have hurt Baron Corbin to get pinned. So now, WWE, what you're telling me is that Baron Corbin and Shinsuke Nakamura is going to have one more match, and that's going to be a SummerSlam. I don't want to see that. The fans don't want to see that. Why? Um, why? Nobody wants to freaking see that, WWE. I don't want to see that. The fans don't want to see that. There's one match that we want to see at SummerSlam, Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the United States title, but we're not going to get that because you're... Abysmal world of booking. I really don't want to see Nakamura versus Baron Corbin for SummerSlam. I really don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Baron Corbin could have taken a really, a really, a really, really, to the point, a knee to the face. What was wrong with that? Overall, the match was eh. It had its moments. I'm giving this uh, just to be cherishable and give it a B, B minus to a C plus. And overall, like maybe like a uh, six out of ten. Next, the Fatal Five Way Elimination Match: Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Lana, Natalya, and Tamina. I was so surprised on the outcome of this match. That really shocked me. I wanted Natty to win, but I didn't pick Natty. I picked Charlotte. And Natty won! I got nothing bad to say about this one. This one, actually, this is another match I would prefer you to watch. It was kind of odd having Tamina and Lana save each other neck and neck. Actually, Tamina saving Lana. And Lana not doing anything to save Tamina. I don't understand. I, I don't know where this is going. Um, is Tamina going to train Lana to be a better wrestler? Come on, WWE. Got to pick up the pace a little bit with that. You got you to gotta, you gotta tell us what, what you're doing. That what makes it better so we can understand the viewer to understand what's going on in that little rivalry. Um, I love the spear between... Play, uh, Charlotte and Tamina through the ropes. That was kind of good. That was a very good spot. And also, um, Charlotte being so muscled out of the shove shooter to nail Natty with a power bomb. I thought that was going to be the finish. But nope. Natty literally hits. Boom. Just gets the queen off her throne and just literally one, two, three. Natalia wins. We're going to get Natty versus Naomi. I want Natty to win. I want Natty to win at SummerSlam. But I believe they're going to cash the briefcase in. Carmella will cash in her briefcase at SummerSlam. You just mark my words with that. Anyway, now let's go to the match that was very, very disappointing. The United States Championship match. And this is where shit hits the fan in this pay-per-view. This is where the pay-per-view rarely got killed. How come an AJ Styles and Kevin Owens match couldn't have saved this pay-per-view? Why an AJ Styles and Kevin Owens match was terrible? Number one, it was really good 
But here's the thing that should have not happened. The referee bump was very unnecessary. Very unnecessary. Also, a very shady pinfall? And Kevin Owens wins back the U.S. title? What? Come on, WWE. Come on, WWE. Come on now. Really? Those two really killed this match for me. And also, three, what was the point of putting the belt on AJ for Kevin Owens to win it back at Battleground? That makes no sense. None at all. So what you're telling me, WWE, is that I have a feeling this is what's going to happen. It's going to be AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens at SummerSlam. But you know what? Since we've been getting shady finish, we had a shady finish at Backlash. A shady finish at Battleground. You might as well make this a ladder match. Might as well make a ladder match. It will be good. Don't get me wrong. But... I really want to see Nakamura versus AJ Styles for the United States title, but we're not going to get that. I hope well, I hope we get it, but down the line. But SummerSlam is the perfect opportunity to do that. Why wait till WrestleMania? Why not make SummerSlam? SummerSlam is your second biggest show of the year. No, wait. Not the second. Got to be between the second or the third. Well, it's the second to me because I, pref I love WrestleMania. It's WrestleMania's number one. My second favorite is SummerSlam. SummerSlam is your biggest party of the summer. And how to go out with a bang? Nakamura and, and AJ Styles for the United States Championship would blow through, will blow the water. It will be actually pretty good. Look at Raw. We're already getting um, a fatal four way match that I called Brock Lesnar, Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Samoa Joe. And we are right, you know, Brock is losing the belt at SummerSlam, guys. He's losing the belt at SummerSlam. Also, we're getting a potential Demon Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. The women's match is kind of, I really wish it was a triple threat match. Bailey versus um, Alexa Bliss. But I'll talk about that. We're talking about Battleground. But did you see what I'm getting at? Raw has three, already three good matches. SmackDown only has one so far. And now two potential matches that we don't want, well, one that we really don't want to see. And another match that could be really good, but that's not what we want to see. It's just just so mind-boggling on how the booking is with, with WWE. How booking, like, like how they greenlight something like that. And an AJ Styles-Kevin Owen match couldn't save this show? That is a problem. And overall, the match was not really good. Two horrible uh, bumps that uh, places that should have never been on here. S Five out of ten. There's nothing I can't. I'm sorry. I'd rather watch their match at Backlash before I watch this one. Now let's talk about the third match that actually was actually not even that bad. John Cena versus Rusev. It was everything I... I thought it wasn't gonna was gonna be but also that that part where John Cena literally AA's um Rusev <laughs> off a of thing was kinda cool. I kinda liked it. Also um that Rusev hitting uh, a very kinda sl kinda horrible little sloppy power bomb to counter John Cena's diving leg drop was kinda cool. But overall the match uh the match was okay, but it actually had me on my feet. As an American, you automatically knew John Cena was going to win. Rusev and John Cena, I mean, their matches are just eh. But you, who could you go with with this? I mean, oh, wait, well, my distance, that's at three. I got this one right, too. I got this one right, too. But John Cena, Um, what's next for John Cena? Why do I have a feeling they might do John Cena versus Jinder Mahal? Oh my god. Oh dear. Please don't do that. <laughs> well, to be honest, I'd rather have the belt off Jinder Mahal anyway. So next, uh, th this match will get a um, little bit of a, like a B minus. 7 out of 10.
Now, Sami Zayn versus Mike Kanellis. All I can say is this. This was not a pay-per-view quality match. And if, it, well, it is, but here's the problem with it. This was the second to last match on this pay-per-view. Just think about that. Second to last. Second to last. To be honest, Aiden English and Ty Dillinger should not have been on the pre-show. That match, this match, should have been on the pre-show. And I got this one wrong. I'm happy Sami Zayn won. So, they're probably going to do one more match. You know what I would love to see? Sami Zayn versus Jinder Mahal. Let Sami win the freaking belt. Just, like, make him win the freaking belt. But you know what? It's a C-minus match. Uh, 6.5 out of 10. And now we come to the main event. The Pujami prison match was very... Oh, how can I say this? At first, it was boring. Like most of the, most of the matches that those two matches had. They were boring. But the last, like, maybe like... 10, 15 minutes were actually pretty good. Until... Um, okay, how can I say this? Jinder Mahal... Is I got that one right, but Jinder Mahal literally is a horrible champion. He's the horrible WB champion. A very horrible WB champion. Worse than JBL's title reign with the belt. Why? I think this is the third pay-per-view in a row where Jinder Mahal has had help. That lets me know, WB, you're just telling us, you're telling us that Jinder Mahal can't win a match on his own without the Singh brothers and the returning Grey Kali. That makes him look weak as a champion. This is your champion, WWE. This is your champion. You want to bring fans on to, to India to watch your product. That's fine, but there could have been a better way to do it. Jinder Mahal is not a real believable champion. Not in my book. I think he's the worst like I said, the worst WWE champion of all time. And I hope he loses the belt at SummerSlam. Because and to be honest, it doesn't this doesn't make Randy look weak at all. It just makes Jinder Mahal look weak. And speaking of, how many times is Randy Orton gonna commit murder on the Singh brothers? I don't know who the one I can't think of it. When Randy Punch, I don't know, uh, one of the Singh brothers off the dang structure onto a table. That part was actually badass. That was pretty badass. Orton beating the crap out of Jinder Mahal with my Kindle stick here. That was pretty badass. Order, Orton and Mahal, the, people say in the storytelling, the storytelling's not the problem. It's just the booking. I knew Jinder was going to win the belt, but there could have been a better way to do it. And also having the great Khali choke Randy Orton out for Jinder Mahal to climb it was kind of a very piss poor ending. And I'm not blaming on the great Khali. And speaking of the great Khali, did anybody see where great Khali hold the WWE title thinking that he's the champion? Come on now, WWE. Really? It's just so mind boggling. This match is just so average. I hope this is the last match for both of these men because they both need to move on. What's next for Randy Orton? What's next for John Cena? What's next? What's next, SmackDown? What's next? How could every decision that in this pay-per-view get green-lighted? The only match that was actually that was cool, okay, and actually great, I would recommend the flag match, the fatal five-way match, and the SmackDown Tag Team titles, everything else, skip. You can skip this pay-per-view. That's how I feel about it. Um, let me know in the comment section below how you thought about this awful pay-per-view. And you know what? I am one of those people. This is the worst pay-per-view right now, 2017. But if you wanted to pick the worst pay-per-view that WWE ever produced, this would be high on the list. To me, I thought Hell in a Cell 2015 was bad. The one with Brock Lesnar and The Undertaker was bad. But now that I've seen this, this one takes the cake. So that's all I got for you today, today on the MCMA show. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the show. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're new to this channel, there is a subscribe button right there. Hit it. 
see all my uh, videos. And let me know what you thought about the show. Until then, Michael from MC Major. You guys have a wonderful day. God bless you all. And I'm out. Battleground fucking sucked. It fucking sucked.